All right, so this car behind me, Dodge Caliber SRT4, this is uh, my buddy Alex's car. And, uh, and we're actually gonna do a full fuel system. I can't say that very quickly, full fuel system. Um, so I figured I'd do a video and kind of show you guys how I do my fuel systems. This is in no way to show you how to do the fuel system. This is how I do fuel systems. So this is gonna be uh, start to finish everything from the pump, the canister, the lines, the filters, um, the fuel rail, the pressure regulator, everything. Um, so kind of, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over on the board what I do and kind of how I plan out my fuel system. Uh, for those that don't know, if you don't know anything about fuel systems, hopefully this can teach you something. Um, and of course, I'm not a professional. This is just how I do my stuff. It's worked well for me in the past, and I haven't had any issues out of my fuel systems that I've built. So. I'm going to turn you guys over to the whiteboard so I can kind of start showing you how I plan and, and buy the parts and assemble everything. All right, sorry about my illustration abilities, but you have, you have whatever car you're working on. We're going to talk about the caliber in this instance. You have the fuel, uh, the fuel tank in the back, and you have the engine up front. The engine has a fuel rail attached to it with your injectors, in this case four injectors. You have a canister that holds your pump. Um, it also contains your regulator, so that's gonna regulate your pressure, uh, your pump, everything in there. It's gonna send the fuel through one line to your rail, which is gonna pressurize your injectors, and it's capped right there at the end. That's your entire fuel system from the factory. So, what we wanna do is build a new fuel system. We wanna upgrade the pump, and we wanna upgrade the injectors. We're going for more boost, more power, uh, the factory fuel pump is not gonna be able to keep up with the demands that we're going for, neither are the injectors, so we wanna upgrade those. Of course, after you do anything with the fuel system, uh, injectors, pump, anything like that, you're gonna need to retune uh, your engine. So the factory tune is not gonna be set up for anything aftermarket fuel-wise. So we'll be doing a retune, retune before we crank the car and run it. So basically, that canister back there that holds the pump, we're changing that out. I actually have a new canister with a Hellcat 525 pump. We're gonna be swapping that out. That's gonna feed through AN lines, through braided steel lines. The feed line is gonna go up to the front into our aftermarket fuel rail. So uh, I'm, I meant to add in line there, we're actually gonna have a fuel filter as well. Um, so you have a pre-filter on the bottom of your pump. You have an inline filter in your feed line. You don't want to get any, any dirt, anything like that in your injectors. We want to keep everything as clean as possible. So that's going to feed into our aftermarket fuel rail, which is going to have our aftermarket larger injectors. Um, and then that is actually going to run over to a fuel pressure regulator that we have. We're adding a fuel pressure gauge to that. And then from there, that's going to bleed the pressure. That's what's going to regulate our fuel pressure and then we will have a return line that runs back to the fuel tank with another filter in line there. Um, just making sure we didn't pick up anything on the way and we're not putting anything back in the tank. We want to catch as much stuff as possible, keep the fuel system as clean as possible. So I'm about to go over and show you guys what all we have for this. All right, so over here at the table, I've kind of got everything laid out as far as what we're going to be using. Uh, the fuel canister, I went with uh, JBP. Um, he built me this canister with the pump and the filter and everything already in it. You can see that filter on the bottom there. Um, he's already got my 8 AN uh, feed and return line sticking out of the top of it. Solid piece there. It's got the gasket and the, uh, the fuel level sensor. Um, solid piece right there. Another option that you could go with, which is what I ran on my personal car, Realtune sold this, um, it's basically a billet fuel pump install kit. Um, so this is one option you can do in the factory canister that's in there. You could fit an aftermarket fuel pump with an install kit like this. Uh, for our application, we decided to go with that canister there with the fuel pump already in it. The line's already set up. It's already wired. Everything should be good to go for the caliber. Um, we're gonna come out of this with whatever fittings we need and I'll go over those as we go along and AN line. Everything here is from Fragola. Um, I've worked with them before. I really like this. Um, and just to note, this is going to be an E85 fuel system. 
So this is PTFE line and PTFE fittings. Um, this type of line and fittings can run any type of fuel. Uh, it can run, I believe it can run alcohol based, it can run methanol based, ethanol based, and just regular gasoline based. Um, if you go with your standard uh, braided lines and fittings, you cannot run E85. They say you can't. I've known some guys that have done it, but it can break down that rubber inside the braided line. This is PTFE, so this is lined with a different material that is capable of running, I know you can't see it now, but that inside line right there is capable of running ethanol without uh, degrading over time. So everything here is made for ethanol. Um, so my lines, my fittings, I've got an inline filter and a return filter from Summit. I have my fuel pressure regulator. I have my fuel pressure gauge that we're gonna be adding onto the front of that. I've got the fittings for the fuel pressure regulator and there's a couple different ways you can run these. We'll kind of go over it as we install it. We have our upgraded uh, injectors. These are, I believe they're FIC. Uh, let me see real quick. No, these are, uh, I don't know how to say it, but the DW brand, I think Dish, Dishworks, Dishworks, that company right there. I know I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but I believe these are, yep, 1000 CC injectors. So a solid upgrade. Now, just a reminder, this caliber is still on the stock turbo. So that should be plenty for that setup right there. Um, we have our aftermarket fuel rail. I believe this is a JMB aftermarket caliber fuel rail. Um, and the rest of the stuff. You can also get AN wrenches. These are specifically for AN fittings. And then also some vice clamps. I've personally never used these, but I'm going to try them out on this build to see how they work. And we've got some cutters for the line itself. So these are supposed to make a really clean cut. Also, I've never used those before. I typically use a grinder, but it leaves a lot of dust and residue. I figured I'd get something a little bit cleaner. It's time to step it up anyways. So we'll be cutting that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is get back here in the back and start with the canister itself. All right, so looking in the back seat of the caliber, uh, under this back seat is where you can access the fuel canister. Um, it's where you can get to the top of the gas tank back here, the plug and everything like that. So to take this out, there's one of these bolts right here on each side. Take both of these bolts out and this back seat can just be lifted out. All right, so once you get that seat out of there, and by the way, those bolts are T55 Torx head bolts. Um, just the two of them kind of pull the seat forward and up. You'll get that out of here. Next is to take this black insulation piece out, and that'll let you get to this plastic cover. And take a flat head or something, get up under there and pry that out of the way, and that'll give you access to the fuel canister. All right, so once the insulation and that cover is out of the way, you can actually see the top of the fuel pump canister here. Um, you've got a fuel line coming out that you'll need to disconnect, stick it over here out of the way, and then you've got the electrical plug that operates the fuel pump over here. So we'll go ahead and get the electrical uh, connector unhooked, um, get that out of the way, and then we'll disconnect that fuel line. I can, oh yeah, it's got a lock on it. Uh, and then that fuel line Get that fuel line disconnected stick it over there out of the way and then we're free to get this canister out of here once that stuff's out of the way um, so the next step there's a metal ring that sits on there and twists and locks it in. Um, so we're going to have to take a hammer and a screwdriver and try to knock that around a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can do this pretty quickly. All right, so here you can kind of get a better look at what I'm talking about. So fuel line disconnected from there. Uh, electrical connector disconnected from here. With that stuff out of the way... You can get to this metal ring right here. And all I'm trying to do is rotate it off of these locks right here. They go all the way around. Just take a hammer and a screwdriver and knock it around a little bit. Now, I'm going to leave this kind of locked right here. And I'm going to take uh, basically an air compressor and blow out from around here. Just to make sure I don't spill anything inside the tank. Just kind of keep everything as clean as I can as I go. 
So I'm gonna clean all that up and then I'll show you pulling this canister out of the gas tank. Oof, that fuel tank is full. All right, so the tank was full. Um, I didn't know that because I haven't had the car running. Um, it was a full tank. We're going from gasoline to E85. Um, so I really needed the tank empty. So I just hooked up some jumper wires to the pump, um, pumped all the fuel out of it. I just ran a fuel line outside the car to a gas jug, pumped all the fuel out of it. I would not recommend doing that. Um, safety issues, other issues. I've heard you can burn up a pump. I'm not concerned about it as we're not using this pump anymore. It is what it is. So I went ahead and got the gas tank drained. Now I'm gonna uh, take that canister back out. Basically I had to put it back in, install the ring again so it didn't leak any fuel. That way if there was a spark, it wouldn't ignite anything, but everything's back in there now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this canister out uh, and once it's out, you'll kind of see the fuel level gauge, um, the fuel level sending unit. Um, I will say when you're pulling it out, very, be very careful with that. It can bend and then your fuel gauge is not going to read like it needs to read. Um, but I need both hands to get this out of here. So once I get it out, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. All right, taking a look at them. Obviously, this is the OEM pump we just pulled out. Um, this is the arm that I was talking about, the, the fuel level sending arm um, inside of here so that connector is connected to the pump which sits down inside this housing um, and I believe this is the factory regulator that's your factory fuel pressure regulator on this new unit you can see the new upgraded pump sitting in there but no regulator okay that's why we got our aftermarket fuel pressure regulator over there because we're gonna regulate it ourselves so that's the big difference here. So I'm going to go ahead and install this arm on this one, swap the new gasket in, and we're going to drop this uh, basically the same as removal except backwards. Not a huge deal there. It can be a little aggravating getting these in and out. It's a very tight fit, um, but it shouldn't be too bad getting these in and out of here. So I'll come back once this one's in there. All right, as you can see, new canister is in. Um, these locks do need to go all the way around. You can see a little raised part on them right there. Uh, let me see if I get a good shot. There's a little raised portion that's got to go underneath this tab. So you've really got to hammer on this thing to rotate it around. It might take a little time, but you'll get it. So a few things to note. Once you start putting fittings on the top of your canister, it does raise the, the height up quite a bit so that cover that was on here once we put our fittings on that cover might actually hit these we should still be able to get that cover back on it just might be a little bowed up which is okay uh, then you've got the insulation in the seat over it so it's gonna be fine as long as you still try to put that cover back on here otherwise you'll probably get a gas smell inside the cabin so just try your best to seal this back off but from here we're gonna run 90s to our new fuel line and go up toward the front of the car. Obviously we have a, a feed line and a return line that we have to run. So your factory fuel line is no longer gonna be uh, used. So obviously that's been capped for this application. So that's just gonna hang out there. Um, we might try to zip tie it over here to this or something just to keep it from rattling around. Uh, and we're gonna run our own fuel lines. So connectors all buttoned up. Now it's time to start moving to the fuel lines. All right, so sitting over here at the table, um, this is our 8AN line from Fragola. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and take these cutters and see if I can get a nice clean cut on this edge right here. Now, mind you, this is my first time using these cutters. This is my first time using um, PTFE line, all this stuff. So 
it's going to be a learning experience for everybody. Oh, that's good. Nice. All right, kind of put that back around. All right, so we have our uh, 8AN 90 degree fitting. So you can see there, uh, number 8 by 90. These are the Real Street PTFE black fittings from Fregola. So the difference here between PTFE and regular AN lines, when you take it apart, you have the nut here, you have the 90 itself, and you also have this olive. Um, you can kind of see there's a beveled edge on this side, and there's a, it's like a flange right here on this side. So the point is to take that beveled end and go in between the inner line and the outer braided line. So, I've heard this is the difficult part and kind of the aggravating part with most PTFE line. It's trying to get this olive where it needs to be. So let's see if we can get this right. on but if you can see this you want to push this inner line right here if I can get it to focus that inner line needs to come all the way up to that flange so we're gonna keep working with that now the gloves are not there to protect me from the line I'm gonna get cut one way or the other the gloves are just to keep all the blood from dripping all over the floor so um, and another thing is once that line once that line is seated all the way against this flange right here, make sure you just kind of tuck it in. Um, you just want it to be round all the way in and out of the way. So when you insert this in there, um, it doesn't actually bend that line. Now I forgot the golden rule here, which is to put your nut on first. Lucky for me, I have the other side so I can just slide it on the back side. Um, but of course, the videos I watched, the nut goes on first because when you put this on, you're not able to get it over that. That's my fault learning experience, but here we go. So once that's on there, let me go ahead and get the nut on the back side. All right, after 20 foot of hose, we've got the nut on there ready to go. And make sure this is fully seated all the way. tried to push that in there it actually caught the lip and that's what we don't want Slid that in there. Make sure we push it in. And then you're going to bring your nut up. And start threading it on. And here is where we go to the vise. Alright, so over here at the vise, we actually have these, they're just magnets. Uh, they're made specifically for these hose ends. So we can get this in here. And remember, it's my first time using this clamp too, so I'm just trying to figure everything out. Okay, and 
Let's make sure we slide them all the way over in the jaws. There we go. I've heard you just want to snug it up. You don't want to make it so tight that it actually crushes the nut. And I'm putting it on the nut so I can actually push this fitting into that hose a little bit better. I have my 8AN wrench. And something that I didn't do before I started it, but I will do before I go any further. Give it a little bit of lubrication. And then you can start putting your fitting on. Just like that, that is our first PTFE fitting done. Many more to come. All right, so taking that fitting in, oof, we'll get to this in a second. So what I did with the open side, I did put some tape over the end of it. That way, as I was feeding it through, nothing actually got in the line, so it's keeping the inside of the line clean. And then I fed it through uh, from the canister over the gas tank, under the car. I went ahead and figured out where I wanted to run it to the front. Um, it's gonna be right next to a frame rail. Uh, that way I can bolt it to the frame rail as I go forward. Um, and looking at this fitting, so the way these, these lines are, I have to 90 off of them to go over. And you can see it raised it up a good bit. Um, the unfortunate thing is that's going to be in the bottom of the seat. I don't know how we're getting this cover back on. I'm going to have to do something there. Um, I remember when I did mine, um, the factory feed came out the side here. And I got an adapter that adapted to an AN line. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that with this setup. Um, and then my return came, and I think it just came in the top kind of like this one did. The good news is the bottom of that seat has some cushion in it. So that cushion will kind of sit over this. It's just we need the insulation and that cover on here so we don't get that fuel smell in the vehicle. But we'll get to that cover uh, near the end of it. I'm sure we can figure something out for that. So the next thing I did, I went ahead and screwed it on just loosely right here because that's our feed line. Uh, so I've got it on the feed side. Uh, I don't want to go this way because that line is going to be right up against that metal. So I'm going to shoot it out to the side and go down. I'm going to put a little bit of insulation on that line there. That way it doesn't contact that metal directly. And we'll have some insulation on that line there. But I ran that line down. The next step is going to be to come under the car. So here's your gas tank here. There's our line coming down. So I'm either going to go with this rail all the way to the front or this rail where there's nothing all the way to the front. I wanna come on this side of it. The exhaust is running right there through the middle. So I wanna stay on this side of this rail or over here on this one. Either way is fine. As long as you're not near the exhaust, you don't wanna get fuel line near exhaust for obvious reasons. But now we can kind of map out what we wanna do next. And pardon the, uh, the spider webs under here, this thing's been in here for quite a while, just waiting on me to finish it. The next thing in line is going to be our fuel filter. So we need to figure out where we're gonna mount the fuel filter. And what that's gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing mounted uh, somewhere on the frame rail, kind of easy to get to. That way, if he needs to change it out in the future, it's not a big pain to get to it. But then once that is mounted there, I can run my line to it and mark on this line where to cut it and add the next fitting. 
Um, and then I'm gonna take this line back out, cut the line there, and then add another fitting on here, a hose end, and connect it to that, uh, that fuel filter. After we get this small piece here connected, then we know from there to here is good. And then we just keep working our way up to the fuel rail uh, piece by piece. And I think after the fuel filter, the next step is to get to the rail. And then after we get to the rail, we are done with the 8AN line. So let me go ahead and get this done. We'll see what it looks like. All right, just like that, our first line is done. We have a 90 on this side to connect to the canister and we have a straight connection on this side to connect to the fuel filter. As you can see there, if I can get it. So that's gonna be mounted under the car, basically right under the driver's side door. There's a nice smooth area there. Um, so I'm gonna actually put a mount on uh, this line here. And then where we hook up the next line, there will be a a hook up there to hold it to the car as well. So this will kind of be free floating in the middle. I'll probably put some tape or something around it just to keep it from rattling on the frame. Um, but I don't really want to secure this to it. One, just because I don't have a, a strap that large basically, but uh, two, just so when he goes to remove it, he doesn't have to take a, a mount off of this or anything like that. So it's just going to be right in the middle of two mounts so he can get to it. Easy removal, easy change for the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this, uh, I'll get this tightened on the canister. I'll get this secured under the car, get this tight onto here, and then we'll start measuring for our next line. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna do anything until I get up front to the fuel rail. So I'll see you guys when I get there. All right, so I'm working on the second line, but I figured I'd go ahead and cover this. So up front, your factory fuel line comes into your factory fuel rail right here, and then it deadheads right there since the regulator's in the back. So what we're gonna do, go ahead and disconnect the fuel line. Um, and of course, all this is gonna be replaced. So I'm gonna tape that off so nothing gets in it. I'm leaving his factory fuel lines on the car. If he ever wants to go back to the factory fuel system, he, he can. Nothing is permanently modified. This is just running a whole new system, but his old system will still be in the place. So this is already unbolted. Uh, the injectors are already loose. Um, it's just these two bolts right here, one there, one over here, that hold that to the intake manifold up here. Uh, that bolt right there and that bolt right there. So these are some old injectors. I believe these have been on the car for the past five years just sitting. Uh, so we got some fresh ones over here, but we'll take a look at the new fuel rail. So this is the old one. And this is the new JMB fuel rail. So obviously this is where your injectors go. Uh, these tabs right here are replaced by uh, these adapters. So they can bolt on there, uh, which fit it to the car. And if you notice, that fuel rail goes all the way through. So it's threaded on both sides. So on one side, we will have a feed line coming in. The other side will go out to the fuel pressure regulator. Unfortunately, I don't have these fittings. I'm gonna see if I can find some. Uh, I might have some here that I could use, but if not, I'll have to order them. I'm gonna go ahead and keep running the line just because I know it's going right here. So I know it's gonna be a dash eight fitting on here. Uh, so I can go ahead and run the line to this, just not hook it up yet. So I'll go ahead and get those ordered tomorrow, have them on the way, but I'm gonna go ahead and put the new injectors in this rail, get these uh, brackets on here. Go ahead and get this rail and the new injectors installed in the car. That way I can mock up and see where my line is running to. All right, a while later, this is kind of what I'm looking at. Um, I had a bit of a change of plan and I'll kind of go over that with you now. I went ahead and got the intake and the battery in here just so I could see where I want to mount my fuel, uh, my fuel pressure regulator. There's not a lot of options in a factory layout like this. So I think what I'm going to end up doing so this is the regulator out of my car, the old regulator. And I'm thinking um, these two bolts right here holding the PCM in the car, the ECU in the car, I think I'm gonna make a bracket off of those bolts and hold this thing somewhere right back here. It's kind of out of the way, but you can still see the gauge, no problem. And you've got access to the fittings, the line is back here, everything. So I'm gonna build a, build a bracket for that and put it back there. Now, uh, this is our feed line coming from the canister in the back of the car. 
and I was going to bring this to the fuel rail, which I have here with the new injectors in. I was gonna feed the rail, and then in order to get back there to that, um, you can see the belts are over here. The end of our rail is right here. So I would either have to just do a straight uh, turnaround, a straight 180 back this way, um, or do a 90 and try to tuck it under the manifold and come back. I'm not doing that. That's typically how I like to run lines, but with all this stuff, you know, my car was a little bit different. But how this one is, what I'm gonna do is actually use both sides of this regulator, so you can see our uh, inlet coming in here. Um, so typically, if I looped it back to the fuel rail, it would come in right here. Let me sit at the table and show you what I'm talking about. So this is the new regulator. Of course, it's threaded on the front so we can put our gauge in there. You have the return. Uh, that's where we put the fitting on the bottom for the fuel to be returned. You have your adjustment screw on top to set your base pressure. Uh, you have your vacuum line on the side, and we'll go over that when we get near the end, I believe. Um, and then you have, you can see, it passes all the way through. So you have one side over here, one side over here. On my setup, I had the feed line from the pump running through the fuel rail into this side of the regulator, and it was capped here. So all that pressure was coming here. It would build pressure through the entire fuel rail. When it hit this, it would regulate the pressure and bleed off any excess. Um, something that I think we're gonna do with this car, we are going to feed from the canister into this side. Um, and you can see that line will flow through to this side. Then we'll run this line to our fuel rail and cap the end of the fuel rail so it stops there. So from the tank, pass through here and it will be capped at the end. That way when it builds up pressure, it will actually release here. Um, and that's kind of how we're gonna set it up. I know it sounds a little confusing. Um, maybe I'll draw it on the board too. So you guys remember this from the beginning of the video. So instead of doing this setup, we're just moving our regulator. We are moving our regulator to right here and allowing the pressurized fuel to pass through and then we're gonna bleed the return from here. You wanna make sure the rail has pressure. A lot of people, when they bring the, the feed line up, they'll put in the fuel pressure regulator, then go to their rail, then return to the back of the car. This line is pressurized, and this is just bleeding the pressure so you actually don't get pressure at your fuel rail. You can either do it the way we did at the beginning of the video, or have the pressure line go all the way through, pass through there, and then bleed off from here. That's the correct way to do it. It's a little confusing. There's better pictures and routes on the internet, but this is how I'm gonna set it up. So what that means for our fuel line here is I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and build a bracket and mount our regulator back here. And then instead of this connecting to the fuel rail, I'm gonna cut it a little bit shorter and just connect it to the fuel pressure regulator. Then that piece I cut, it might be long enough to reach here. If not, I'll get a new piece and we'll bring out the other side over to the fuel rail and cap it on this side to where we don't have to come out over here at all. All right, it's a good little while later, but I'll kind of show you what I was rambling on about a minute ago. So we took our feed line that was going up here. We cut it a little bit shorter and we're just passing through the regulator now. So it comes up, meets this side, comes out of here, runs into our rail, and then over here on this side, uh, it's just capped off on the end. So all of that is gonna have pressure, and then when it hits our, our base pressure, it's gonna return any fuel out of the bottom, and we're just gonna return, uh, return that fuel through the return line back to the tank. That's kind of how I set it up. And I did not use the bracket over here. I actually wanted a little bit more kind of where it's at right now. It's pretty much front and center. You can see it. Uh, it's secured to the firewall back here. Um, it's actually not the firewall. It's the little uh, cowl, whatever this is called for your windshield wiper motor that sits in there. Um, so it's actually mounted to that now. It's pretty solid and it looks really good in there. Um, so you can see the gauge. As soon as you open the hood, you can see your fuel pressure, no problem whatsoever. And I was able to use that line that I cut off to make this small line right here to connect. Um, so the feed line is done. And what I'm gonna do now, I've got a 
I've already got my fitting in the bottom of the, uh, the fuel pressure regulator. So now I'm gonna start building my line to go back to the tank. So I'll have a piece that runs from here under the car to the return filter. And then one more piece of hose from the return filter back to the canister back there. And I think with the canister, I'm gonna do something a little different. But once I get the line ran back there, I'll show you what I do back there. All right, I went ahead and went to the back of the car and pulled the canister back out. Um, let me see, yeah, here we go. Basically, um, you guys saw, oh, yeah. This is an old, uh, old 90 that I had laying around. So basically, when I put a, a 90 on top of here, it came up pretty far. I mean, that's, that's pretty far out. So what I went ahead and did is I ordered a bulkhead 90. This is a 8 AN. I also have a 6 AN for the return uh, that connects to a regular, I think that's a 3 8 line. Um, so I'm gonna open that hole up a little bit and sit that down in there. And basically when that goes in, it's gonna take it from sitting that high to sitting that high. Uh, so pretty big difference there. I went ahead and hit up uh, Johnny with JBP uh, and let him know I'm gonna be using a bulkhead just because these came way up uh, basically into the bottom of the seat. Um, he was he was pretty cool about it. I don't know if, if moving forward maybe he's going to use these or not, but just a heads up, I'm going to end up using these bulkhead fittings. So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, the 8AN feed installed, the 6AN return installed, get this back in the car, and then I'll keep going on the return line and I'll kind of show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, it's obviously raining. Hopefully you can hear me. Fuel pressure regulator is done, feed line comes in, passes through, goes to the rail, capped off. Return line runs back. There's a fuel filter in both lines. Go back here to the back of the car. Bulkhead fittings are in. Both lines connected. You've got your 8AN feed going to the front. You have your 6AN return coming back. Went ahead and zip tied the old fuel line to secure it to the new line just so it doesn't flop around in there and make any noise. Those uh, bulkhead fittings did a lot better. We are almost flush, almost, which is a lot better than what we had. So now we're gonna be able to get that cover back on here. I'll probably go ahead and put some tape around it too just to seal it off. The biggest thing about that is you just don't want the smell of fuel coming up through the car, so. Guys, and with that, that is the entire fuel system, front to back. That's how I do it. There's a hundred different ways to do it, if I can focus. But that is how this car is done. That's how I did it here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.